Good morning, so my name's Caleb and I convert school buses into tiny homes. Man, I love spring and summer. Just like having the doors open, doing the thing, sun's out. Uh, it just makes everything better. I hate the cold. Glad it's over. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how this bus went from a burden of a project that took three years to me taking it over and having it livable in less than three weeks. So normally I'd start with like the specs. I don't know a lot of them because she just wanted this thing finished and I'm just here to make this thing happen. I think it's a 1998, it's the international. I don't know the actual link, but we're about to find out. Twenty-nine footer. You know what? That's actually a great size then. Well, I guess you could say thirty and a half feet because we added the mini split. When she dropped this bus off three weeks ago, she'd already done some work on it. She'd already paid like three other people to do some work on it. When I got it, it had some strapping up that I had to adjust because they used drywall screws to attach them to the walls as opposed to wood to metal screws. The solar system was already installed, but it blew a fuse, so I had to do some troubleshooting with that. The electrical was already ran, but honestly, the way that it was done and me putting my name on it, I redid most of it. We installed these to the driver switch panel because she wanted to use those so when she's driving around, she can like light up the sides of her bus. There's two on this side, two on the driver's side. You can't really see what's going on. Hit that switch. You have almost a 360 degree light view. So the majority of the work that we did was on the inside. This thing went from being a scary little haunted house to now a livable vessel. It's got AC, it's got plumbing, it's got a shower, it's got a kitchen, it's got a stove, it's got propane, lights. We have a mini split on board. It's got heat and air. That's cool. I apologize if I'm talking really fast, but I forget to film these tour videos. I'm just excited to like release them to the clients and I forget to like make these videos so the rest of you guys can see, so you might be able to be a client of mine. So when we got this bus, the first thing we wanted to do was make sure all the electrical stuff was working properly. So we had to spend a, quite a bit of time fixing that stuff, but we did fix it. So that means all the lights that we installed in her cedar tongue and groove ceiling have worked great. Her max air fan that was installed now works the way in which it's supposed to do it. Putting walls up was not originally part of the agreement, so we decided that, you know what, we can do this in, a, in like a day, day and a half to put all these walls in, get all the windows cut, and now she's got finished insulation, she's got finished walls, she just comes up in here, paints, put a couch, and this thing is usable. big kitchen. This is probably one of the larger kitchens I've done on a single side of a bus. We have 98 inches of butcher block counter stop space. We have a three burner propane stove and then we have a 18 inch deep sink base. We also installed a pop-up outlet, two USB ports, three plugs, so I don't want to say I'm a snob when it comes to materials, but I like using good stuff. Um, in most cases, pre-made cabinets are like either particle board or composite board. If for some reason that gets wet due to some kind of leak or some kind of like spillage, and you're driving this thing down the road, all those composites and particles start getting loose because they swell up, so they don't hold up well. So I like using real wood cabinets. So we had these made for the bus. They're standard eight inches deep, 22 inches long. So you can put a lot of stuff in this. And one thing is that I see in the school bus tours that I think is pretty funny, is they always talk about their sink and how you can roll your window down and then turn this outside and do like an outdoor shower. So yeah, in this bus, there's like three ways to take a shower. I think one of the hardest things to do in a school bus is the walls. Each one of these walls would probably take three hours to make. We cut it like an inch or two longer than what it's supposed to be. And then we come in here and we like lean it up against and then we get a pencil and scribe and we scribe and we scribe and we scribe and we do that like 15 times per wall. That way we get as close to the ceiling as possible and we don't have these large gaps. So we ended up putting all of her walls in for her. This is gonna be her pantry. She's gonna add some deep shelves there. 
because she can cut some rectangles and hang them in a closet, but she can't do plumbing. So utilizing the client's time, what is most efficient for their time. The thing I get asked to do the most in buses, it makes sense because it was the most daunting part for my first school bus build was electrical and plumbing or solar and plumbing or kind of a combination of those three trades because that stuff is tricky. So we did that. She's got a 24 by 30 shower base and then this thing is about four feet by almost three feet. So it's a pretty good large shower. We've got a nice subway tile on the sides here. Nice black trim Schluter. You know, it's the details, man. She is going to go ahead and install her own composting toilet or porta potty or whatever she decides to use. There is power on the opposite side of this wall for 12 volts, so she can plug up if she decides to use the fan within the 12 volt units. I recently bought that new tripod and I've been using my old tripod for like years, but this thing is a whole new learning curve. Caleb, why did you not put the shower head in the center? Because if I put the shower head in the center, that means the water is going to go this way. And I don't want the shower water to go this way. I want the shower water to go this way into the shower pan. So I put it here. It's also the highest point of the bus. It's a magnetic adjustable mowing. And you can also do another outdoor shower. <sighs> now that I think about it. That's funny. So this is a debatable topic, but I always think these are necessary because living in a bus without heat or air isn't as comfortable. And if it's not comfortable, it's not fun. If it's not fun, it makes it really hard to live in. So we put mini splits in almost all of our builds. These things at peak pull like 900 watts, 12,000 BTU unit. This thing is ready for like 500 square feet. This bus comes out to be whatever seven and a half times 30 is. Seven and a half times 30. 225 square feet. So then the last part of the equation is water. We install it all over our water systems, her gray tanks, her fresh water tanks. We've got 80 gallons here. We also have an electric Fugati water heater, which is eight gallons. I like using the electric ones because they're instant. You don't have to worry about your water pressure within the water pump to ignite your propane tankless water heater. This uses energy when you need it. It pulls like 1200 watts, but it only pulls it for like 15 minutes. So 1200 divided by three is 400. So it only uses like 400 watts to take a shower. In our old bus, we were constantly fighting the water pressure. The water has to be a certain pressure for, to it to ignite the instant hot water heater. And when you're in a bus, you're trying to save water. So you just trickle the water on, on the sink, but you want your water to be hot. So it's like, it doesn't work. So I like using the electric hot water heaters. They have the same amount of space and you get eight extra gallons of water and they work when you need them to. You put it on a switch right here so she can turn it on, turn it off when she wants to and needs to. You also have another outlet right here for her to use in her bed. Water pumps on a switch. I think this is the best builder hack that I've come up with when building a school bus. When you're framing out your, your bus and your walls, you don't really need to make them like structurally sound because it's wood and a metal bus. It just doesn't need, like, they need to be strong. Like, this thing is not gonna move, so it's solid. But you don't have to have, like, traditional standard building code framing space in and stuff. So when you're gonna build out your walls, you can build them out so that you have space to notch out a nook. So this is the other side of the shower wall. This is the framing for the walls. And then I just routed all this out, and now she's got a space to put her cell phone and a glass of water or a wallet and a pocket knife when she's sleeping. What? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I can do it up, up too. <laughs> Jeez, bro. <laughs> Okay, hold on. You ready? Well, she was happy. She was stoked actually. She was like, this thing is usable. It's been so long since I've been able to use this thing. And now she can sleep in it, she can shower in it, she can cook in it, she can do all the dishes. She can use this bus that she's been having for like three years. So yeah, I'm glad she's happy with the bus. This thing is almost next flipper bus. 
still needs to be worked on because I want to get it down so you guys have a chance of buying it. Harry Potter themed Airbnb is coming along and that'll be cool because you guys could stay in it. <sighs> so blessed to be here. Thanks guys.